Thou shalt have the power to degenerate into the lower forms of life which are brutish. Thou shalt have the power out of thy soul's judgment to be reborn into the higher forms which are divine. The hermetic philosopher departs from the conception that there was in former ages a unity between God and man. And this unity is lost. And what the philosophy aims at is to recover this unity. This is that peace which God creates in his heavens, which the angels descending to earth proclaim to men of good will. That through it, men might ascend to heaven and become angels. Contemplation of nature. Looking to nature, not with only with scientific eyes, but through nature, getting the idea behind nature. Whatever seeds each man cultivates will grow to maturity and bear in him their own fruit. If they be vegetative, it will be like a plant. In the oration, you have a beautifully eloquent, spelled out statement of the intermediary position of man. Man consists of uh, higher and lower uh, uh, potential, potentialities. He's set midway, a little lower than the angels. He loves to uh, quote from the Psalms there. A little lower than the angels. Uh, a little higher than the beasts. Uh, where he will go, whether he rises, to rejoin the one, the uh, source of all being, God, or whether he descends, and not into a Dante-esque hell, but descends to a kind of state of material brutishness, depends on his own will. The oration is, is, uh, has been described by Eugenio Gadin, the great Italian Renaissance scholar, um, as the manifesto of the Renaissance. I have read in the records of the Arabians, Reverend Fathers, that Abdallah the Saracen, when questioned as to what on this stage of the world, as it were, could be seen to be most worthy of wonder, replied, there is nothing to be seen more wonderful than man. An agreement with this opinion is the saying of Hermes Trismegistus, a great miracle, Asclepius, is man. At last, it seems to me, I have come to understand why man is the most fortunate of creatures and consequently worthy of all admiration and what precisely is that rank, which is his lot in the universal chain of being, a rank to be envied not only by brutes but even by the stars and by minds beyond this world. The best of artisans, the creative powers, addressed man thus. The nature of all other beings is limited and constrained within the bounds of laws prescribed by us. Thou, constrained by no limits, in accordance with thine own free will, in whose hand we have placed thee, thou shalt ordain for thyself the limits of thy nature. Thou shalt have the power to degenerate into the lower forms of life, which are brutish. Thou shalt have the power, out of thy soul's judgment, to be reborn into the higher forms, which are divine. Whatever seeds each man cultivates will grow to maturity and bear in him their own fruit. If they be vegetative, he will be like a plant. If of the senses, he will become brutish. If intellectual, he will become an angel and the son of God. If rational, he will grow into a heavenly being. And if happy in the lot of no created thing, he withdraws into the center of his own unity, his spirit, made one with God, in the solitary darkness of God who is set above all things, he shall surpass them all. So let a certain holy ambition invade our souls, so that 
Not content with the mediocre, we shall pant after the highest. And since we may, if we wish, toil with all our strength to obtain it, full of divine power, we shall no longer be ourselves, but shall become he himself who made us. For he who knows himself in himself knows all things, as Zoroaster first wrote. I have also proposed theorems dealing with magic, in which I have indicated that magic has two forms, one of which depends entirely on the work and authority of demons, a thing to be abhorred, so help me the God of truth, and a monstrous thing. The other, when it is rightly pursued, is nothing else than the utter perfection of natural philosophy. The former can claim for itself the name of neither art nor science, while the latter, abounding in the loftiest mysteries, embraces the deepest contemplation of the most secret things, and at last, the knowledge of all nature. As the farmer weds his vines to elms, so does the magus wed earth to heaven. That is, he weds the lower things, the endowments and powers of higher things. If all of this appears new and strange to you, Reverend Fathers, think on how the sphinxes, carved into the temples of the Egyptians, reminded them that the mystic doctrine should be kept inviolable from the common herd by means of the knots of riddles. The theologian, Oregon, asserts that Jesus Christ, the teacher of life, made many revelations to his disciples which they were unwilling to write down lest they become commonplaces to the rabble. This is in the highest degree confirmed by Dionysius the Areopagite, who says that the occult mysteries were conveyed by the founders of religion from mind to mind, without writing, through the medium of speech. Let us consult the Apostle Paul, the chosen vessel, when he himself was exalted to the third heaven. He will answer, according to the secret interpretations of Dionysius, that he saw the cherubim being purified, then being illuminated, and at last being made perfect. When we have been so soothingly called, so kindly urged, we shall with winged feet fly up like earthly mercuries to the embraces of our blessed mother and enjoy that wished-for peace, most holy peace, indivisible bond, in one accord with the friendship through which all rational souls not only shall come into harmony with the one mind which is above all minds, but shall, in some ineffable way, become altogether one. <laughs> this is that peace which God creates in his heavens, which angels descending to earth proclaim to men of good will that through it men might ascend to heaven and become angels. Let us wish this peace for our friends, for our century. God creates in his heavens, which the angels descending to earth proclaim to men of good will, that through it they might ascend to heaven and become angels. Let us wish this peace for our friends, for our century.